All right, so in this video, I know I've been doing a lot of videos about carburetors and stuff lately, um, you know, because after work uh, and at lunch every day, this is what I'm doing. I am, uh, you know, kind of tuning my own mini bike right now. So, you know, um, the carburetor right now. Okay, so let's talk about fuel signal. All right. If you have a carburetor that stars for fuel on the top end, um, and uh, you know it's not getting enough fuel you know obviously you try jetting it bigger 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 if you jet it bigger like in this situation where I've taken the main jet out and it's still lean on the top end um, you need to address your fuel delivery system pumps gravity whatever you're using um, this is a gravity fed to a pump on the top there this square piece on the top of this carburetor is a pump that pump sucks and pumps the fuel from the tank into the carb any extra fuel pressure goes back up through a return line back up into the top of the tank um, the tank is also vented now in a Makuni super bn carburetor um, because it has a pump in it that pump if it's at its limit is now the restriction so um, a couple ways you can mess with fuel signal instead of let's just go in all negative here let me try to give you guys a little tip so after reading a very long article um, a couple years ago there was something that I had picked up and uh, it was a company that was doing testing um, with uh, small carburetors large carburetors and what they were doing was messing with fuel signal and what they found out was that uh, engine with the larger carburetor on it will outperform an engine with the smaller carburetor hands down um, it does take a lot more work to get the bigger carburetor to work because what happens is when you put on a massive carburetor sometimes extremely massively oversized um, imagine trying to draw a vacuum which is what draws your fuel imagine trying to draw a vacuum in such a large area um, you know especially as the engine accelerates your pulse signal drops um, and uh, you know if the carburetor is just extremely large you get a fuel delivery issue so there actually is this perfect um, combination um, with engines and uh, you know an easier way to do things you know it'll make a little bit less power but an easier way to do things is put on a smaller carburetor now this is very true and it'll make it easier but i i just tested this theory and it's a hundred percent guaranteed true so what i'm going to i'll tell you exactly what i did so the way you can mess with the fuel signal is if you have a lean condition on top and there's nothing you could do about it you just can't get enough air uh, you just you just can't get enough fuel so what you need to do is um, you need to adjust uh, you know you need to get a little bit less air but you still need to be at wide open throttle position so how do you mess with your fuel signal so for an example this is what I've done on mine I took a spray paint cap cut a hole in it and put it on the carburetor now you can do this with various sizes you can do this with not you know uh, spray paint caps you can do this with pieces of billet plate on these carburetors here there are three bolts that come off and I know they do that on uh, you know high-end race engines they'll take off the manifold and they'll have a piece of billet cut with a perfect size drilled hole in it and they'll use that in combination with an oversized carburetor to get the maximum amount of power out of an engine um, so I was actually messing with my fuel signal I had made this um, and then I had basically like a thin filter I put on first and then put this over it so there would be a thin filter in here this wouldn't be wide open then I would take a clamp and put the clamp around here and this would be one big nice unit now as I did this and uh, you know I, I started you know real small with the hole and I'll tell you when I started with that small hole Instantly, you know, the, the throttle response was quick and, and spontaneous, and it just felt like a much more 
easy to ride bike you know it was just predictable you hit the gas you know and it was just predictable as i went up and bore and bore and bore you know it got a little bit more unpredictable which led us back to where we were in the beginning um no restrictor here's the funny part same thing when it felt like it was riding better to when it's unopened like this when it's open like this i was getting 10 mile per hour more and it was running poor so imagine fixing that fuel delivery problem what you want to do is you want the most amount of air and you want to be able to keep up with the fuel flow that's how you really solve the problem restrictor plates yeah they'll work they'll get you there but why not just get the right amount of fuel in there that's why the makuni so if you have a tillotson you can try just taping off a small part of your carburetor and basically by taping off a small part of your carburetor you are making less air which will give you a better fuel to air ratio so if on the top end you are running lean you could take a little bit of tape put it around the edge of your carburetor and you will have a richer carburetor and you can just keep messing with that in sizes until you got it dialed in perfectly it will feel a lot better i did it myself i got it felt great but i lost 10 mile per hour in less than an eighth i'm doing less than an eighth because i'm not going that fast but um consistently 10 miles an hour consistently so what's the fix so the whole initial problem was this pump on this carburetor can't keep up if you've watched my other videos where people had said oh we put a couple of pumps on there none of that works because that pump in the carburetor then becomes the restriction um, all those pumps can do everything they want to do, but once that pressurized fuel gets into this carburetor, this carburetor is going to stop it, pump it, and send it on its way how it wants to send it. It doesn't care how much pressure is coming in behind it. It's going to stop it, pump it, and send it at its rate. It's the boss. That thing is in control. That is the metering device. Now, the way I can tell you that's 100% correct is because the guy I was talking to at Hut Products, Tom, he put it to me great and this is what he said you could be out on a jet ski with 30 gallons of gas in the tank 30 gallons of gas has a lot of weight now you could be doing 70 miles an hour over four inch four foot chops so you could be dropping four feet down at 70 miles an hour and slamming into another wave he said you have to be in great shape to do this. You know, he said he stands on the sidelines. He, he sponsors people, but he'll never be out there doing it. And he's the one that told me about this fuel pump I needed and how to block off this plate and all that. Guy is over there. He's amazing. Tom, at, um, if you have a Super BN, Tom, he can't sell you nothing, but he's smart and he'll take the time to talk to you. Um, but uh, what he said is all that gas in the fuel tank Imagine the weight of all that 30 gallons up in the air it comes crashing down. Now, all that weight, it has to go somewhere, like the bottom of the ocean. It's just real. There's a lot of pressure. So at the bottom of that gas tank, there's a little uh, nipple that goes to the fuel line that goes to the carburetor. So all of that weight of that fuel slamming down, that now becomes a hydraulic ram. You have a, a big space. This is the way hydraulics work. They have a lot of fluid in a big area. They put a slight amount of pressure on that and they condense that down into a small area. That small area, just with a little bit of pressure on that big area, is now able to move a ton of stuff. And that's how hydraulic works. So this gas slamming in these fuel tanks is like a hydraulic ram. If this carburetor could not stop that ramming force, then it would just flood every time you hit a uh, four foot chop. Um, at 70 miles an hour or if you just sit in there on waves the weight of that gasoline would just be banging fuel pressure in and out against this pump this pump has to be able to stop and regulate it so putting any previous pumps before this pump it's you know it's placebo um, it's not really helping the only way to get more fuel pressure and that's why I think this is a better carburetor than Tilson because at Tilson you can't bypass the pump and on the Super BN you can get a block off plate block off that pump 
And you might say, well, why even use a, one of those type of carbs to begin with? Because if you don't, say if you use a PWK or a, a flat slide, you know, TM or VM Makuni, TM Makuni or PJ Carb or any of these other type of carburetors that have a float with a spring, you put the amount of fuel pressure required to run a big block at wide open throttle through that carburetor at idle it's going to have a stronger pulse signal because pulse signal is strongest at idle and gets weaker towards full wide open throttle so if you have this big old amped up fuel pump pumping towards this carburetor that's not supposed to be a pump carburetor like a P i'll just keep saying pwk style or a you know mccooney vm or tm style with the float you know all that fuel pressure is just going to overflow it and if it's not powerful enough to overflow it then that means at wide open throttle you're going to have a fuel starvation problem so you're kind of doing these 360s so this has the ability to bypass the pump and it has enough and it has the correct guts inside with the spring and the pop-off to control the fuel pressure so this has the starts to everything so you take this pump block it off and then i'll show you the fix right now turn around behind me and here it is i'm just kidding isn't this fuel pump adorable this is the fuel pump that most people have uh, for like a predator 212 this is like that seven dollar ebay piece of crap amazon garbage walbro fucking shit show i mean this thing is probably all right for gas um small block you know if uh you still had gravity fed i mean these things are kind of useless some people might like them who knows but uh you know this this type of situation here is not going to work for you on a big block on methanol oh no you're going to need the biggest baddest fuel pump that mccooney makes and that's right here look at the size of this beast look at the size of this monster when it came in today i almost shit i only seen the pictures look at this thing this thing is massive. That's a 5 16 inlet right there. Look at that. Let me show you the other one. Look at the size difference. That just goes to show you how much fuel this thing can move. Let me try to pick this up here. Do it right the first time. Look at the difference in the size. Huh? This pump is no joke. It weighs like a pound. It's massive, made in Japan. It's made out of metal. It's made out of metal. Like this thing is no joke. You could see where it was scratched and the aluminum is underneath. Like this thing is no joke. 5 16 in. There's your pulse. Two fuel lines out. Um, what he said was uh, some people block one off or some people bring them into a Y and then run that into the carb. He says try it full strength first. If that's too much pressure, try blocking one off. You know, what I'm going to do is uh, run them both into a Y, run that through like a ball valve fuel shutoff to regulate my fuel pressure, and then run that into my carburetor. So this, uh, I don't have the uh, carburetor top plate fuel Block, uh, fuel pump block off uh, yet it's a billet piece it should be in either tomorrow or Friday when that comes in I'll uh, put that on the uh, super BN carburetor and I'll, I'll you know we'll, we'll install all this stuff and I'll let you know exactly how that works out but uh, another thing um, when you are dealing with pumps hold on one second let me get a sip of coffee here When you are dealing with like fuel pumps and stuff like that, um, the where you pick up your pulse, there's a lot of question about that intake, valve cover, crankcase, um, and uh, what you need to know um, is you need a pulse. Um, so I'm actually venting off my valve cover now. I don't think that's the best. Um, but I don't think it's the worst. I'm not quite sure. I'm pretty sure venting off the intake is the best. Um, but needless as that 
whatever be. Um, I am venting off the valve cover. So if you're venting off the case or the valve cover, uh, one thing you have to have in order for your fuel pump to be working is for the, the block in the, um, you cannot have a sealed block in valve cover. It has to have some kind of vent to the atmosphere in there somehow, like a puke tank with a vent on it, something like this, where it has a puke tank. Um, my block goes through a ball valve so I can open and close it into a puke tank and the puke tank has a vent. And uh, this is how my carburetor is pulsed off the valve cover. Now say if I didn't have that puke tank uh, or I had the ball valve shut. Um, this, you see how this one isn't like the stock one. This doesn't have that little hole over here that just vents. So this would now be completely sealed. And especially if your crank seals and all that stuff are good and your valve cover gasket is really tight. Um, what you're going to do is build up an immense amount of pressure inside of the case. Especially if you're on methanol and you're getting fuel blow by. When you stop the engine, you will hear like hissing where it's, you know, the pressure is coming up through the, the valve guides and stuff. I mean, it, it's just like the pressure inside the engine. You'll take the, the oil cap off and it'll just like blow out like a, like a whale. Just blowing out all this oil and stuff. And uh, you definitely got to have that vented. So um, if you don't properly have your um, crankcase vented... Uh, your fuel pump will not work properly, period. So uh, make sure that's well vented. Now, if you are venting off of your valve cover, another thing that you might run into is getting uh, fluids into your pump, whether it's fuel or oil, most likely a mixture of the two. Um, that can get up into the tube. Some people try making a loop, you know, uh, to try to stop some of the uh, fluid you know it'll they, they think it'll you know won't be able to make the loop up and around and into the pump but it still will um, you know the only way to really kind of remedy that is to kind of raise the carburetor up above the vent um, or the pump rather uh, get the, the pump up above the uh, valve cover but um, on some engines uh, in some leagues um, you know, mini bike's not really a, a player in this, but in some go-kart, uh, some of the rules and stuff state, you know, positions of the, the pumps and stuff, so you can't really mess with that. But anyhow, if you are getting fluid into your pump, like I am, um, the way to remedy that, the best way, especially since I'm going, now this pump is extreme, this is like six bucks, this is like a hundred bucks. This is the Mac Daddy. This is like 16... Le uh, liters per hour or six liters this is like 75 this is like double the those big metal circle Makuni pumps like the big powerful ones for two stroke Rotax like shifter carts this is double those double those um, the guy says uh, this will power a 1600 cc two stroke snow, um, snowmobile engine, road tax engines, uh, jet ski engine, 1600 cc two stroke. So this better be able to do methanol on a 400 cc. We'll see. But uh, sounds like it should because you know usually you're around triple the amount of fuel. So 400 triple is around 1500, 1200. You know he says this will do the 1200 to 1600 cc sled. So. You know, a 460 triple is uh, 12, 13 something. So should be just about enough to do it. Again, so trying to keep the oil out of there, what I picked up is this is for a Honda. This is a really nice piece. Um, what this is is a, a oil separator um, from an airline oil separator for a Honda. This is the original Honda part. Um, so what you do is... Uh, Got my valve cover, so the hose would go from my valve cover to this, then from this to my pulse line on my pump. This will stop any oil, fuel, or anything getting to the pump. This is a separator. 
Um, this will stop it, unlike doing, you know, I've tried fuel lines, I've tried, no, I'm sorry, I've tried screens, I've tried uh, fuel filters, none of that stuff works. You need an absolute separator. Uh, and this is the second one of these I've used. I used another one on my drag cart. Works great, works 100%, stops anything. Last time I took my pump off the other day, um, for the first time on this Makuni carburetor, the uh, little pump blister was 100% full of milky gray colored methanol mixed oil. Disgusting. Drained it out. Pump started working a little bit better. But that pump's just not able to pump enough fuel. So this is the setup. If you guys are running methanol, running a big block, this is how you do it. You get this fuel pump. This is the big horse. Um, 702. It's a D, D F six two seven zero two Maconi fuel pump dual outlet, the biggest fuel pump they make, and then you need to get one of these oil separators. Um, these two in conjunction alone, that's the that's what's up. You know, restricting air. The whole reason we put these big 42 millimeter carburetors on our engines is to breathe. The only way you can make horsepower is with CFM. You know, if you can move the air but you just can't get the fuel, what kind of sense does restricting the air make? I mean, even with the bad mix, I wasn't even, I mean, just like this, if I ran it, I would get 10 miles per hour more. It would feel like it's running like shit. It's starving for fuel up top. I restrict it. It sounds better, it feels better, but I'm losing 10 miles an hour. I mean, I was doing 70 miles an hour like this. I took it off, I was doing like 62. It's like eight miles an hour when I restricted it. I mean, imagine this thing, and that's only like 500 feet, and five, that's less than an eighth mile. My fat ass, 300 pounds, is getting up to 70. Imagine when it has enough fuel. Imagine this thing ripping. And that's just on methanol. Wait till we start tuning, that's M1. You know, we can go M1, we can go M5, we can go Nitro, we can go crazy. I mean, so uh, that's just a little info, a little knowledge, a little, some of my tries and tribulations, just bringing this stuff. Um, hope this stuff helps you. Um, the big Makuni fuel pumps here, the, you know, oil separator. Um, that's how you kind of remedy the big blocks. Thursday or Friday, I'll have the stuff on and installed. Uh, and then we'll truly know, you know, how much power that adds. I, it's a fuel starvation. Everybody I've talked to says their big block is lean on top. We're about to fix that. I got the cure, Paul's carts. I'm Paul. Hope you like the video. Like and subscribe. Really like this shit. Fucking like the video. Click that shit now. Like, subscribe. Um, Got a thousand subscribers. That shit's crazy. I don't even know how that happened. I just looked. I'm like, holy shit, I got a commercial on my shit. Shit's crazy. But, uh, yeah, that's how I'm going to get the power out of this thing. That's how I always get the power out of them. Last time in the competition, last November on the small engine, I was running a TM, um, 38 millimeter TM carb which doesn't have a pump in it, but I was on Nitro. I had two of the round Makuni fuel pumps um, and uh, had those wide going into that. So you just need enough pump to get the fuel going. So I think, I think we're gonna get this one solved, get this one all figured out, uh, and then we'll be putting down some crazy ETs at the track. So again, Paul from Paul's Carts. Till next time, have a nice day.